Greetings to all. Welcome to VMware Administration Planning Session. Srinivas here. Yeah, this is day two, session two of three days, uh, three sessions, uh, three transitions. And session two, we are going to talk about uh, before going to proceed further, we are going to discuss about uh, what is about training module. This training module is Monday to Friday, daily one hour session, 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. IST. So you can join and you can experience the live sessions. And at the same time, if you are not in a position to join the session, you are in a position to review the recorded session, which uploaded by our admin team. So proceed further. For any kind of queries related to this VMware training, you are in a position to connect, you can dial up any listed number and you can send a mail communication to support at logiclabsec.com. And first three sessions, what are the sessions? Yesterday we completed demo session, Apart from that, today session number two and one more session will be free to attend without a registration. And these three sessions will be uploaded to YouTube so that you can review and understand what is the content, how the modules are going on, and you can experience how the sessions are going to present and what are the topics we are going to discuss and all those things. From fourth session onwards, from fourth session onwards, this uh, free Zoom link will be modified and whoever registered, whoever enrolled. So they will get a new Zoom link to join and continue this online session at the same time. Further recordings, whatever the fourth day onwards, along with the first three sessions, recorded sessions, and from fourth day onwards, whatever the session it is completed, that session will be uploaded to that graphic site wherein you are in a position to access that regard session and along with the notes file for lifetime, whoever enrolled for this particular training session. To get information uh, about this training, uh, please try to join our WhatsApp community. So once you log in, logiclabstechnologies.com, if you log into logiclabstechnology.com, this is the site logiclabstech.com, and you can click on upcoming batches. This is the upcoming batches. Well, as soon as you click on upcoming batches, you will find the complete information about course content, course details. I am going to click on upcoming batches. Under upcoming batches, we embedded. There are different training modules from logiclabstechnology.com. So wherein you, whatever the course you are looking for, you can enroll and you can experience the live training sessions and upskill your technical skills. So here, the batch number 65, which talks about uh, VMware administration and trainer powered by Srinivas. And the time zone, it is 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. IST early morning session. And if you want to get, if you are not still not part of uh, any Zoom link, you can click on this particular Zoom link. You can click on, click here to get the Zoom link information and then you can uh, join that WhatsApp community to get latest update information about the uh, current training module and uh, upcoming training sessions. So what are the sessions we are going to conduct uh, the learning team is day-to-day -day, uh, provides different technologies. So whichever you are interested in to upskill your career positions, so we can join that session and you can experience. So for all these sessions, you have uh, free sessions and the free sessions will be uploaded to YouTube. You can review the session and experience how the training modules are going on and you can enroll. 
This is a Zoom link information. Once you are happy with this particular Zoom link information, and you can go to proceed with the course content and uh, payment link information, you can click on that so that you are in a position to coordinate and uh, enroll this training modules. Okay. So if you have any concerns, if you have any queries related to training module or anything, you are in a position to you uh, happy to assist our support team. You can reach out uh, support at logiclabstech.com. At the same time, for this particular VMware training session, you can send a mail communication by looping me in CC so that either one of us, either myself or uh, admin team will definitely respond to your query to answer uh, and uh, update necessary information. Okay. So this is the information about this training. So these are the contact information. You can reach out and you can send a mail communication at any point of time. And you, we are going to provide a response at most important. Yeah. Move proceed further. What is today's agenda? Today's agenda is we are going to discuss about hardware voice application and users relation. Before going for virtualization, we need to understand what is a requirement before understanding the virtualization concepts. We need to understand how the a hardware a voice and applications and users are working. Okay. And understand the resource sharing concept. This is a today's agenda. We are going to cover one by one. And the first point is uh, hardware versus OS versus application. Uh, what is this? If you see, <clears throat> this is a traditional way of interacting users, applications, and operating system and hardware. What is why? But what is a requirement from users? What is a requirement from users? Users need to access the application, isn't it? Users need to access certain application, certain application to fulfill their requirement, right? So what is the requirement? User might be accessing website to, to book a ticket or whatever it may be to get, to book the ticket, what he need to, he has to connect a web server wherein website, wherein he has to enter the login credentials and then he has to complete the requirement. How this web interface is going to come into picture? How, what application, the application requirement is going to come into picture? So how to fulfill user requirement? So application requirement is going to come into picture. So application requirement to fulfill that application deployment, the software developer is going to develop the application in such a way that to fulfill user requirement. So where this application is going to run? So application, any kind of application, it requires an operating system wherein operating system fulfill this application. For each application developer, they are going to develop the application in such a way that they need a platform. So to execute this application to fulfill the user requirement. So what is the requirement? OS requirement is coming into picture. So it is going to provide support to that application to run as expected. So OS requirement, what OS it is required? It is the application developer is going to decide what OS it is going to support to run my application smoothly. So, OS requirement is given into picture that OS, what are the OS? It may be Linux operating system, it may be Windows operating system, whatever the operating system is. The operating system funda is, it is going to run requests to load an operating system, it requests in a hardware. That's where we are going to come into picture, hardware layer. If you see this particular PPT, what is user? How many users are going to access the application? To access that application, whatever the users are trying to connect, it may be 
you are trying to access a website through mobile or system, whatever the way it may be, but you are going to access a one particular application in any manner. So that application has to support your requirement, to support your request. So what is they are going to do? They are going to install an application to support your requirement to access your, by your respective users. So application softwares are going to install. Where they are going to install? They are going to install an operating system. So here, this operating system, what it is going to do, operating system layer, if you see this particular operating system layer, this operating system layer, what it is going to do? Either Windows or Linux operating system, whatever the operating system may be, this operating system layer is going to access the hardware layer and interact with the hardware layer. What is interact with the hardware layer? It is going to interact with the hardware layer to assign resources, either processor resource, memory resource, IO resources to that operating system and operating system in turn it is going to give that instructions and resources information to application to run as according to the demand. So what it is happening, entire structure, what it is happening, the operating system is coordinating with the hardware layer and getting the resources according to the application requirement and application is running the application to fulfill the user requirement. If the user number of users are going to get connected to that application, that means it requires more resources. So as and when it resource demand is there, that application it is going to ask the operating system layer, give me some resources to run, to fulfill user requirement. So what it is going to do, it is going to contact the hardware layer and whatever the resources are available under hardware layer, it is going to share those resources to application requirement. Okay, this is the traditional way of application sharing resources is going to. For example, I am I'm using a laptop. I'm using laptop. In my laptop, this laptop is nothing but a hardware, isn't it? On hardware, I'm running an operating system Windows 11. If I see this, how many applications are running? Whatever the application is going to execute, it is going to get a resource share. It is going to get a resource share. How this resource share is going to happen? See here, this particular Google Chrome, it is sharing the resources, CPU, memory, and network and disk. What is this? This all resources. Where from where? Who is assigning these resources? Operating system is coordinating with the hardware layer and whatever the resources are available in hardware layer, from out of which it is giving some portion of sharing the resource to respect to application. So here, what we need to understand here, how the resource sharing is happening, how the resource sharing is happening in this particular diagram. Okay, so based on this, we are going to move to virtualization. How the virtualization to understand? Here, the same concept, it is going to come into picture. The hardware layer is same. The hardware layer will be same. What are the hardware layer? It is a motherboard, CPU, memory, and storage and network. There's a net storage and network we are going to represent as a IO operation, input and output operations. So here, the operating system, till now we discussed about a Windows operating system or Linux operating system, right? It is an operating system to load, to coordinate with the hardware, to assign the resources to respect to applications. Now, this operating system will be replaced. This operating system will be replaced with virtualization layer. This operating system layer, the Windows or Linux operating system will be replaced as virtualization layer. What the virtualization layer is going to do? Whatever the applications, this application instead of applications, it is going to come the system, virtual system. So what is happening? It is going to typical diagram. 
if you have any questions or any concerns you can raise hand so that i am going to unmute yourself so you are allowed to speak up so whenever you are going to get stuck or if you want any clarification and whoever uh, going to uh, review this uh, session on youtube that is free session on youtube so you are happy to come back and uh, send a mail communication to Srinivas at logiclabs.com. This is my mail ID, the final mail ID, and you can cc to support at logiclabs.com. If you want any kind of clarification, whoever not joined this is live training session and reviewing that YouTube link and to get a second understanding about the topics and uh, queries, you can send a mail communication to Srinivas universe at logic labs tech.com cc2 support at logic labs tech.com you can send a mail communication one of it yes, that is it's not an issue we are going to coordinate with each other and make sure we are going to get a response immediately okay so who are going to review this session in youtube without joining this live training session they can if any query in this previous uh, three sessions, three sessions, if you have any query and uh, need to get uh, more information, we are happy to assist you. Uh, please drop a mail so that we are going to respond with uh, whatever the requirement is. Yeah, thank you. Coming back to the topics. So whenever you have any uh, questions, raise your hand so that I'm in a position to answer your queries. Okay. So move forward. So what we understand is user application OS hardware. This is a structure underlying for any kind of system. It is going to build up in such a requirement to fulfill user requirement. Without user, there is no requirement application. There is no application requirement. There is no requirement of OS. And if there is no OS, there is no hardware requirement. So this is the structure. Why we are going for virtualization? Why virtualization? Now the topic is why virtual. We understand that the relation between the hardware, operating system, application versus user. That's what we mentioned here. Okay, this is a today's the, the topic is hardware, OS, applications, and users. We need to understand the relation between why we are deploying a server. What is the requirement to install an operating system? For all the things we need in hardware. Without hardware, without hardware, I cannot load an operating system. Without operating system, I cannot load an application. So without application, users are not in a position to fulfill their requirements. So we need to understand where we are going to change this concept in virtualization so hope you understand the resource sharing concepts resource sharing concept in the sense from the hardware whatever the hardware we are going to discuss from the software uh, what are the cpu what are the memory storage network all these components how would they are sharing the resources to respect to application to run effectively why is the application to run effectively to fulfill user requirement. User should not face the issue while accessing that application. For example, you are trying to access a web server or uh, IRCTC website to book a ticket or flight ticket. If, as soon as you log in, you are going to enter the credentials and log into the site to book the ticket. If the site is not responding and the keep on rotating or it is not responding up to speed, up to smoothness, what you are going to face issue you are not in a position to perform the action you are not, you are going to switch over to different place different uh, site to book the ticket so what are the business whatever the bank sites or it may be they need to target that user experience user feels uh, happy while working on that while looking for certain requirement they should feel happy that everything is right click away so that's the reason we need to make sure how the resources sharing to that application so that application runs smoothly and then user can access that respect to 
requirement without any issues okay that is a concept now we need to understand hardware on the hardware how what are the resources are there and how to access the application now the same hardware we are going to discuss about in the virtualization how it is going to play an vital role in virtualization okay why virtualization why virtualization we understand the sharing resources and all those things now why virtualization the basic concept of virtualization is the coming the basic concept is going to come into picture the virtualization comes in picture for example i am buying a server or buying a laptop now i am using my system laptop system i i bought it for uh, 1 lakh rupee the enterprise laptop system or for example 30000 laptop whatever it may be well whenever you are going to use see the task manager this is a task manager and i'm in, i'm in a position to see that what is my resource utilization for example it is 30000 and i'm using this laptop for personal okay but while using the server application they are going to use number of uh, users are going to connect we need to design the hardware in such a way that to provide certain requirement now coming back to my laptop i purchased this laptop for 30000 or 1 lakh rupee now if you see what are the resources my hardware is nothing but a set of combination of the processor capacity memory capacity and disk space uh, 500 gb disk network uh, a 1 gbps network connection so what is it uh, 100 cpus There two CPU and eight GB RAM. This is my laptop configuration. Eight GB RAM and five hundred GB storage. One GBPS network. So, out of this my hardware resources, I am going to purchase and got it this configuration and how. what is the resource utilization if you see my cpu is using only below 10% and memory is less than 30% and if you see the disk it says maybe out of 500 gb it is going to consume maybe 50 gb and remaining 400 gb is free whereas in coming to the network the network is going to access between my available bandwidth of 1 gb plus it is going to use maybe 300 mb or 1 mb or less than 100 mb so what it is going to happen remaining 900 mb so these all the things are going to come into picture how effective utilization of resources effective utilization of resources how effectively i can utilize i am purchasing the system but i am not using the up to mark i am not using the resources as per my cost involvement so i am wasting the resources here so that's the reason the virtualization concept is going to come into picture how effectively utilize the resources the by using the same hardware resources if i use number of systems number of servers number of applications so that i am in a position to utilize this particular so what we are actually the particular system very effectively how to use so if you are going to think about the server architecture wherein for each server you may think about that okay effective utilization this is a server i am going to use number of application web server db server all those things in one particular okay. server in enterprise environment is it possible to deploy number of applications in a single server hardware no so for each hardware for each application for each uh, uh, deployment it requires a separate hardware to isolate that particular application to run independently so wherein we are going to come back and understand that effective utilization of resources 
how effectively you get utilizing the resources available. So we are going to come back this particular issue in enterprise server architecture. Okay. Whereas in enterprise server or information, we are going to talk about why virtualization. Okay. So effective utilization is the main concept of virtualization. What is the effective utilization? Whatever the hardware we got it. In my case, my laptop is using only less than 10% of CPU and 30% of memory. If you consider about server hardware, we are going to purchase the server hardware lack of rupees, right? Lacks of rupees. So out of if I install only web server on the server, my utilization is only 10%. How about remaining 90% CPU? How about memory? Whatever the memory configuration it is going to come along with the server, how I am effectively utilizing the memory. So that the concept comes in picture, the virtualization. The virtualization main concept is how effectively utilize the resources. By using the same resources, instead of using same server, for example, to install an operating system, what I need? I need, need an hardware, right? So, by using the same virtualization, what we are going to do, instead of this particular operating system, I'm going to use the virtualization layer. Virtualization layer. Virtualization layer OS. And this by using this virtualization layer, what with operating system is going to do? Operating system is going to coordinate with the hardware layer and the get the resources, get the resources from the hardware layer. That is the operating system layer concept. So what it is going to do, what it is going to do virtualization layer, it is going to create a virtual systems. What is a system? System is nothing but a combination of five major components, a which system. A system means what is my laptop? Laptop is having a motherboard, on the motherboard, we are going to install processor and memory, network card, the store, store the data. I need a some storage space. That is a system. So by using this virtualization layer OS, I'm going to create a virtual system. Virtual system VM, how we are going to create that virtualization concept, it is going to create a virtual system. Now system is ready. So same, I'm using the same hardware, I'm using the same hardware. What are the server I bought it for? The same hardware I'm going to use by using the virtualization layer. I'm going to create number of number of systems. Number of systems in the sense I'm going to get a number of systems on each system. I can load respect to operating system like maybe Windows or Linux, whatever the operating system I'm ready to deploy on this particular virtual system. So that what I'm going to achieve is by using and by using the same hardware, only one hardware, how many virtual systems I'm going to deploy? How many systems I'm going to deploy on top of its systems? How many operating systems I'm going to load? For each operating system, what I'm going to do? Different applications. One server, maybe web server, One may be DB server, different, different requirements. So what I'm going to achieve this effective utilization. If I'm going to use application web server, one system, DB server, one more system, by using the same hardware, why, how come I'm going to achieve this concept? By using the virtualization. Why virtualization? It is the main concept is effective utilization. Not only that, not only effective utilization, it is going to save the footprint. It is not only effective utilization, saves the footprint. What is the footprint? For example, I need a 10 servers in my organization. Take an example, 10 servers. If 10 servers, I need to place 10 servers, I need to purchase. How much space I need? How much space I need to provide to place that physical server. For example, 
laptops, simple understanding, layman understanding, laptop. To place my laptop, I need to sit in front of the system, I need to work, right? So that I need to provide some space to place the laptop and sit to work. In the same manner, the server, the server hardware, the different models are available, server models. I'm going to explain while installing the ESXi host. I'm going to talk about what kind of server models, what kind of hardware we are going to choose to install that ESXi host, okay? So how the footprint is going to change? For any server hardware, whatever the hardware we are going to purchase, it is a tower model servers are there, tower model, uh, rack servers. We are going to see that what is a rack server, what is the tower model and all those things. See, this is a this is a tower server model and rack server model and blade servers. This kind of physical hardware are going to use to deploy our virtualization layer. What kind of virtualization layer, what vendor we are going to use, we are going to experience that. Okay. So for example, to place this kind of server, this place this kind of tower server in 10 servers I'm looking for. To place this 10 servers. I need a space, okay? But to deploy TensorFlow itself, I need a place of uh, a room. That room may be a data center. I need to provide power supply. I need to provide AC and I need to provide cables, storage, network infrastructure, complete infrastructure to place 10 servers. I need a complete infrastructure. Whereas in, if I use this, that same 10 servers can be deployed on by using only one hardware. By using only one tower server, I'm going to replace all 10 servers as a virtual system. Instead of 10 physical servers, I'm going to replace as a 10 virtual systems. How it is going to happen? How we are going to create those virtual systems? We are going to achieve by using this virtualization layer. So what I'm going to achieve? I'm going to replace 10 physical servers. That means replacing with only one server, all 10 servers will be replaced in one, accommodated in one physical server. That means I'm saving the footprint. What in sub one room size, I need a small place to place this server to run my 10 servers. That means I'm going to save the footprint. Not only save the footprint, if 10 servers, power consumption, AC consumption, and all those things, administrative tasks, all those things are going to save, right? So effective cost. So I'm going to reduce the cost, power consumption, AC consumption, all those means I'm going to save the cost, right? So effective cost reduction. So why virtualization? It is to optimize effective utilization of resources. What is the concept? Why virtualization means? Virtualization is going to play a vital role in day-to-day -day operations in, in current industry. It is going to save number of servers. Not only that, it is, for example, my laptop is down for the some reason. My server, I'm going to say that my laptop is down. Am I able to work and am I a single user? I'm not in a position to work. For example, as we are going to deploy a system, a hardware, if it is a physical server, if the physical server is down and I'm using that physical server for my web application, IRCTC or flight ticket booking or web bank application to log in to do the transaction. If the, my server is down, how many users are going to get impact? Until the server is going to restore, those many users are going to impact. Business is going to get impact. But in virtualization, we are going to reduce the downtime. We are, with the virtualization, we are going to reduce the downtime, round downtime. So as it is a virtual system, I can quickly restore the system with using effective tools I can reduce the downtime so that users getting very less downtime. So users are able to access the application round the clock without any impact, okay? So by using the virtualization, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the effective resource utilization, 
it is going to save the cost by saving the footprint by saving the power consumption and all those things and at the same time reduce the downtime if for example any issue is there we can quickly restore the server quickly restore the server with within a minutes deployment for example if you want to deploy a server a physical server and physical server what i need to do i need to place a purchase order i need to procure the hardware once the hardware is delivered i need to configure i need to configure the application all those things in virtualization within minutes within minutes i am in a position to deploy whenever requirement is there i am in a position to provide that server to the application users whereas in for example in my laptop or my server physical server is there the physical server is having a space issue or more resources are required what i need to do again i need to uh, go for place the harder i need to get the part delivered and i need to add that part to the server and it is going to take lot of time days together maybe sometimes months together to get it the part delivered and get it activated in virtualization what are the resource we told we know we learned that there are five components processor ram storage network within fraction of minutes i am in a position to expand i can add the resources as per the demand these all the things are possible with a virtualization layer okay so this is a why virtualization is in the sense the main concept is effective utilization optimize resource utilization that is a main concept what how we are going to deploy the virtualization layer and everything we are going to see any doubts any questions you can unmute yourself and you can speak up if you have any questions or raise your hand so that i am in a position to answer your query okay at the same time whoever reviewing this video this recorded session on youtube if you have any clarification or any doubt you can send a mail communication to srinivas@logiclabstech.com and cc2 support@logiclabstech.com either one is going to work if i get a mail communication if it is not in my way answerable from my end i am going to forward that uh, communication to support team support team definitely will forward and get back to you okay so yeah whatever the query it may be we are in a position to forward whatever the query it may be we are in a position to respond to your query please send a mail communication whoever going to watch this video on youtube okay who are joining the live training session you can raise your hand and you can unmute yourself and speak up okay why virtualization we discussed and that is a today's topic that is why virtualization we understood that what is the advantage is we are going to reduce the downtime we are going to add the resources as per the demand we everything can be completed within minutes whereas in if it is a physical server some uh, requirement is retail means we need to place the order the part has to be delivered and we need to add that part to the server it is going to take more hours together days together to get it okay so that is the advantage of virtualization now we are going to talk about what are the virtualization vendors available virtualization vendors vmware that's what we are going to learn about this module vmware data center virtualization we are going to learn about dcv data center virtualization and the dcv we are going to understand icm concept what is icm install configure minus this is a module for 7.0 okay this is a module vmware we are going to learn we are going to provide the training on this vmware vmware vsphere data center virtualization 7.0 okay so who are the there in virtualization vendors vmware microsoft nutanix 
Red Hat. Oh, who was there? Citrix. There are different virtualization vendors are available to provide this virtualization layer. Why they are for each and vendor they have their own uh, uh, features. Okay. According to whenever we are going to purchase some application, some uh, product, we are going to see that what are whatever the features it is going to support. Based on the features availability, I'm going to choose the SP2 product. Maybe the same product I'm going to I, the different vendors are going to provide. I'm going to choose the best one. What is the best one? According to my requirement, whatever the features it is going to provide, I should be happy. As a user, I, I'm the user, I'm going to use that product and I should get whatever the features they are going to provide. I should be happy to use that product so that I'm going to choose that respect to vendor product, okay? So in the same manner, in the virtualization layer, the virtualization layer concept is how effectively utilize my hardware resources. My physical server is there. On physical server, there is a 10 CPU and a 10 GB memory and 500 GB hard disk and 1 GB base network. Those five comp four components are there. Those four components, how effectively I can use by using what kind of virtualization layer I'm going to use doesn't matter. My main thing is that how effectively I'm going to use how user friendly the interface is because I need to create the virtual system. I need to deploy operating system. Once operating system is deployed, I need to install the application. So to perform all these actions, the virtualization la layer, whatever the virtualization layer, it has to provide support, okay? Easy to maintain. That is where the concept virtualization vendors are going to provide. Each vendor is has its own advantages and disadvantages. So based on that availability, we are going to choose what virtualization layer, okay? VMware, why VMware is industry leader in virtualization, the products compatibility, the product portfolio, and what are the features it is going to provide under VMware, it is going to number of operating systems, number of compatibility, like I'm planning to install Linux operating system. In Linux flavors, there are plenty of flavors. Ubuntu, uh, Susi Linux, different, different flavors are there. How many operating systems are going to support on my virtualization layer? That is a main concept because whatever the virtualization layer it is going to support, I'm going to install number of application. For each and every application, there each application, why we are loading an operating system to fulfill the application requirement. So Whoever deploying that application, that application is going to run a specific OS operating system. If that operating system is not uh, um, available, then whatever the virtualization I'm going to use, it is meaningless. So that's the reason they are going to see who are the customers, what virtualization layer you need to choose. It is going to check what is the features it is going to provide, what are the operating system is going to provide support, and at the same time, how effectively you can manage the environment the tools to manage that environment the virtualization layer that everything comes on picture so while choosing the respect to virtualization layer okay so vmware it is vsphere vmware vsphere server we are going to discuss about the product portfolio what are the products are there out of product portfolio we are going to discuss about data center virtualization okay coming back to the Microsoft, another virtualization layer, Microsoft. It is Microsoft provides Hyper-V. So it is, it provides some advantages. What is advantages? It is going to provide some license in cost is reduced while using Microsoft Hyper-V. Only we need to purchase Microsoft. Uh, if you are going to deploy only certain limited uh, operating systems, limited features, or whatever the features you are looking, comparing whenever you are going to uh, purchase a product, not only features, if the features are more, definitely the cost will be more. Uh, simplest example is comparing with the mobile. Apple, Apple mobile is going to cost high, whereas in other Android mobile, it is going to cost less. So what is the features you are going to get? What is the interface you are going to get? How uh, look like 
and all those things it is matters while working on server administration we are going to see that how effectively it is going to support my application so that's what we are going to see how effectively we can manage not only that we need to see that how what is the cost involvement to get that virtualization product whereas vmware it is a cost is high compared to other virtualization layers and at the same time they are going to see that the compatibility that the user interface and the certain features like a cluster how the uh, how to maintain availability high availability how the resources can be migrated automatically to avoid the downtime furthermore virtualization already it is going to provide to reduce the downtime but at the same time business critical applications to run smoothly without any issues i think any performance issues wherein we are going to see that the vm should migrate to during the maintenance activities as well to get high availability so how we are going to maintain that cluster features how we are going to maintain that virtual machine high availability we are going to see that how it is vm where it is going to provide in certain way and microsoft hyper v it is going to provide in another direction so out of the in high availability which is the best what is a user friendly what is a easy to manage then they are going to choose the respective product all virtualization product supports reduce the downtime it is going to provide the failover concepts to minimize further downtime certain features are not going to be available for the certain virtualization vendor so we need to see what is my requirement okay according to organization requirement i need to choose the virtualization layer okay so nutanix one more upcoming and it is competitor very good competitor for microsoft as well as vmware and red hat the kvm citrix gen server these are the different vendors are available in virtualization and not only this there are different oracle different different vendors are there in virtualization environment so most of the market share is acquired by vmware so because of the features and the the management features and all those things so we are going to discuss about in tomorrow session how we are going to explain like how to install and we are going to understand what is a portfolio okay i am going to showcase all those concepts in tomorrow session okay before closing the session any questions any queries you can unmute yourself and you can speak up if you have any questions okay quickly go back we have seven time uh, five more minutes time is there i'm going to quickly go back the vmware product vmware product what we are going to look at we are going to connect to this customer connect customer connect vmware wherein we are going to get a complete products of vmware it is a free uh, you can register freely there is no uh, credit card uh, involvement or no need to provide any credit card details and all those things it is you need to register to uh, to download the product to explore different options you need to register generally who are working at administration vmware administration the enterprise environment the organization the customer are going to purchase license for vmware products what are the vmware product they are going to enroll they are going to purchase license as soon as they purchase license they are going to enroll there is a provision to add manage this particular account so they are going to tag your mail id organization mail id whoever supporting this vmware environment their support personal mail ids will be tagged to this particular customer connect account so whenever you are going to purchase a license of vmware your mail id organization mail id will be tagged to this account so that with that mail id account you are in a position to log in to this particular customer connect if you don't have customer account you are happy to register it is a free registration you can register with your personal mail id so that you are in a position to 
explore the different options under this VMware product. See here, VMware products. I'm going to go for VMware products under products manual. Go to all products. In this all products, we are going to experience VMware vSphere. There are different products are available. All these products, if you see this, all these products are going to depend on whatever the topic we are going to learn. That is VMware vSphere data center virtualization. There, there in vSphere VMware data center virtualization, there are two products by default. One is ESXi and another one is vSphere server. So we are going to cover these two things and how, what are the things we need to download and what is the versions, what hardware we need to choose and all those things. Without ESXi, this is the wax as a virtualization layer, OS layer, OS layer, OS layer as virtualization layer, virtualization layer. So by using this ESXi OSA layer, we are going to deploy a number of virtual systems. How we are going to deploy virtual systems? What are the things we are going to configure to deploy this ESX servers? We are going to see. Under this product cycle, if you see here, download product VMware vSphere, we are going to see different versions are available. I'm going to explain what are the versions are available. Okay. And we are going to download the respective product tomorrow we are going to discuss about this download and then we are going to try to install esxi host and understand the concept of esxi host before proceeding further before closing last call any questions any queries okay okay thanks for all your participation have a great day. See you tomorrow. Have a nice day. Bye.